Chapter 1 New Librarian Day There was once, in the pernicious valley, a strange little town by the name of Widowsbury. It wasn't marked on any map. No roads led in or out of it. Only by train could one reach this forgotten place, but few who knew of it ever dared. The engineer spoke of ghosts in the hills, and they called these hills the Devil's Thimbles. Just outside the thimbles, at the point where the highway ended, was a sign that a vandal had altered to read, If you lived here, you'd regret it by now. No one ever bothered to fix it. There wasn't much point, and anyway it was true. Widowsbury was dreadfully cursed. But even the most dreadfully cursed places were not always so. There was a time when Widowsbury was the plum pie capital of the world. The skies were still blue in those days. Colorful gardens decorated each storybook house. Laughter and music drifted from the square. City folk would come for the famous springtime parades and say, What a delightful little town. Perhaps I'll retire here one day. But that was before the roads were sealed off. Before everything went wrong. They say it was a storm that ruined Widowsbury. Some say it wasn't a storm at all, but evil's kettle boiling over. And when it ripped through the town for twelve straight days, it tore open a gate through which escaped all sorts of foul, rotten things. There were such things as vampires. There were such things as ghosts. There were absolutely such things as mad scientists who reanimated the dead. The once perfect little haven became a beacon for everything bad in the world. Nothing and nobody unfamiliar would ever be trusted again, for one could never be sure what secrets waited under the surface. There was peace again for a few years after the storm. And then, one gray December morning, twelve years to the day, a most troublesome stranger came to town. Adelaide Foss slouched at the breakfast table, her cheek resting in one hand as her other hand poked at the eggs on her toast with fingernails that were just a bit too long. In fact, Adelaide's nails were alarmingly pointy, much like her ears, which she kept hidden behind twin black braids. At the front of the dining hall, the headmistress, Mrs. Merriweather, gave the breakfast lecture. It was an ordinary day at Madame Gertrude's school for girls, which, for awkward Adelaide, meant it would probably be a bad one. Posture is of the utmost importance in the civilized world, Mrs. Merriweather droned, for a true lady must be recognized as such before she even utters a word. Adelaide heard the sound of fabric as someone slid across the bench to her. Without even looking, she knew it was Becky Bouchard, one of the older girls. What's the matter with your eggs? Becky whispered. Not bloody enough for you? There was a smattering of muffled giggles as Becky slid back to her friends. Oh! One of them softly howled. Adelaide pretended not to hear, though it hardly did any good. In truth, she possessed a freakish ability to hear absolutely everything, sometimes even a mile away. A woman without balance in her step is a woman without balance in her life, Mrs. Merriweather lectured. With her hooked nose and her long black gown, she looked like one of Widowsbury's crows. Adelaide often wondered how she blinked at all with her silver hair pulled back in such a tight knot. Adelaide stared off to the right, doing her best to ignore the faces made at her from the left. At the end of her table sat Maggie Borland, with two feet of empty space between her and the others. Nobody ever sat close to Maggie. Her wild brown hair made her look like Medusa, and her jumper was always stained. At the moment, she seemed wholly absorbed in her toast, which she carved into smaller and smaller pieces for no apparent reason. Every once in a while, she stabbed an egg, pounding the tines of her fork into a useless sculpture with each blow. Adelaide was fascinated, but then Maggie glanced up and Adelaide hurriedly looked away. There were rumors that Maggie had tossed a teacher through a window at her old school, and that the teacher only survived by catching on to the sill. Adelaide didn't know if it was true, but she kept a safe distance all the same. This proved difficult, as Maggie was always in detention whenever she was, and Adelaide was in detention every day. When greeting new acquaintances, a lady must be reserved with her initial affection, Mrs. Merriweather went on. Adelaide turned her attention to the other girl she saw in detention on a daily basis. 
Beatrice Alfred. Beatrice, simply put, was weird. She looked like a porcelain doll come to life, pale and tiny with unnaturally dark eyes and short black hair topped with an oversized bow. She was in the nines class, but she was only seven. Adelaide wondered if this explained Beatrice's peculiarities. Weren't really smart people supposed to be kind of odd? Even now, Beatrice appeared to be whispering to something in her front pocket. Who does she think she's talking to? thought Adelaide with a shiver. Which brings me to my announcement, the headmistress continued. Today we are expecting the arrival, Adelaide's breath caught in her throat, of a new... Please don't say what I think you're going to say, she prayed. Librarian, Mrs. Merriweather concluded. Oh no, Adelaide groaned aloud. She is not from Widowsbury, Mrs. Merriweather explained, but I assure you she has many references, and she is quite safe. She will, I hope, be joining us shortly, and I would like for you all to be on your very best behavior. Adelaide's palms began to sweat. This, under no uncertain terms, was very bad news. But there is one more thing, said Mrs. Merriweather. Her eyes narrowed, her jaw clenched. She raised a long bony finger and pointed. Here it comes, thought Adelaide. You! Mrs. Merriweather hissed at her. She did the same to Maggie and Beatrice. You three are to be isolated from the others. You will be separated from the other students. You will be separated from each other. I will not give you any opportunity to frighten away this librarian before she even begins. Adelaide heard snickering behind her and felt her face grow hot. Don't think I've forgotten for an instant what you did to the others, said Mrs. Merriweather as she moved between the tables. The incident with the chair. She glared at a scowling Maggie. The little present you left from Mrs. Elise. She paused at a cowering Beatrice. Your campaign of terror against Mrs. Elizabeth. She watched Adelaide for a long time. Adelaide reddened. I was only trying to warn her. I'm not the one who put the spiders in her bed. Not that she didn't deserve it, she thought but could not say. No, I haven't forgotten, snarled Mrs. Merriweather. And for that reason, I will make an example of each of you. I will show on your arrival that you can and will be controlled. Some of the other girls began to laugh. Quiet, ladies, snapped Mrs. Merriweather. Do not reward these children with your attention, for that is what they are, what they will always be, rude, spiteful, wicked children. Their unwillingness to adhere to the vision of the great Madame Gertrude, may she rest peacefully. Well, I dare say it scares me. Yes, but you scare everybody, thought Adelaide. Miss Alfred, said Mrs. Merriweather, I want you to move to the small table in the far right corner. Miss Borland, to the table in the far left corner. And you, Miss Foss, to the table in the front center. The dining hall erupted with the cackles of three hundred schoolgirls, and this time Mrs. Merriweather made no attempt to silence them. Scary children, sang Becky as Adelaide marched to her seat in humiliation. Yes, it was going to be a rotten day. New Librarian Day always was. Librarians were supposed to read a lot and help you find the books you wanted, but all they ever did for Adelaide was force her to write punishment sentences until her hands turned red, or yell at her for sneezing, or make her sit as still and quiet as she possibly could, with nothing to distract her from all the little sounds of the old building filling her head like a hundred symphonies playing different tunes at once. For Adelaide, librarians were torturers, and each new one was worse than the last.